Hail and well met, adventurers! Welcome back to Hero Sheets, a triple D experience. We got dungeons, dragons, and disabilities. I'm your lovely host, Adoran, and today's intrepid guest is Mustang. Yeah. <laughs> we are doing a, a slightly more um, somber episode today, as I started like real high energy. Um, but yeah. Mustang, you want to talk about like all of the cool stuff you do? Um, yeah, okay, sure. Um, uh, well, I founded this channel um, yeah. and the community around it. Um, and I co produce with um, the lovely Samwise Gamgee. Um, and uh, at the minute, I'm at university, but I will be running um, a Witcher TTRPG on the 22nd of February. Mm -hmm. And it'll be once a week then onwards. Um, week then onwards. Lost Lines of Fandalva will be returning, but it will be returning kind of late spring. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's kind of it for now. Oh, wait, I also work as a sensitivity reader now um, on uh, the Zafia project is the last one I did. Um, and I'm also working on my own homebrew stuff. So much stuff. Yeah. You're also doing uh, Tales, Tales from Thra? Tales yeah, of Tales Thra. From Thra. Yeah. And you just on Monday did a really cool stream. Do you want to talk about that a little? <laughs> uh, Monday was chapter two of a small um, on and off game that I run called uh, Sigil Jinkheist. Um, and it's all set in Planescape um, in the city of Sigil. It's very fun. And on Monday, I was very honored to have um, guest Anna Prosser come and play with us. Um, and she played um, a Shadar Kai called Hareth, who was very literal and extremely funny. Um, and she's going to be coming back in the summer to play Hareth again. Oh, that's, that's exciting. So <laughs> exciting and so cool. And hopefully we'll get into that a little bit. But I do want to start with some questions that we got from our Discord server. Also, if you're not like a part of our discord server you should totally join uh hopefully one of our mods will drop the link to join our discord server in the chat it's a great place to just talk about your disabilities and existing but like also the best place to send me questions to ask all of our lovely guests um mm -hmm. so discord questions uh our first question comes from a freaking door dwarf uh and it is what is it like to be as awesome as you are this is <laughs> Um, like an easy question to start with <laughs> debatable I think but um no it's I don't know <laughs> I'm, I'm just a very tired university student most of the time um yeah uh yeah <laughs> I guess it's just yeah, it's, it's tiring it's, yeah it's tiring <laughs> being a university student you know being a broke all the time um, yeah, <laughs> mood. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I you know find in lots of time to play tabletop games is uh, very important for me though. So yeah, gotta make time for that. <laughs> A busy life. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just going to the next question because that was a question that I knew wasn't going to lead to too many places. Yeah. <laughs> uh, besides humbling you, uh, the author asked uh, how did you end up learning about this community and how did you uh, become involved in D&D? D &D? Um, well I've been playing D&D &D now uh, for about five years DMing as Dungeon Master for about three now um, and I got into D&D &D through a friend um, and through watching um, Dice Camera Action mm -hmm. uh, that was like my, my gateway drug um, <laughs> into D&D &D. Um, and it was about uh, the beginning of, well, not the beginning of last year, but kind of like towards, so about 2018-ish, um, I realized, hey, I never played a character that has my disability before, or any disability, and I hadn't seen any of my friends do that, um, and I hadn't seen any of that in, like, um, media. Yeah. D&D &D media and tabletop media so I was like 
um, okay, this is clearly a thing that needs to be spoken about. So I kind of talked about it a lot on Twitter um, and <laughs> through just talking about it, like a lot of, I've met a lot of people just doing that. Like I met Sam mm -hmm. talking about it on Twitter. Um, and then to like, I decided I'm going to make uh, my own show then um, so that people who were like, you need to stop telling Wizards of the Coast to do something, do it yourself. <laughs> like, yeah, I've done it myself and Wizards of the Coast still need to do it. It's so like, <laughs> what's the excuse, you know? Exactly. Um, yeah, so, and and then like, we were like, oh, we'll make a Discord um, for people who watch um, anything we happen to do. And uh, one thing led to another and now this thing has grown quite big. Um, yeah. Which is <laughs> terrifying, but also really cool. Um, and I'm really grateful for that. Um, but I, yeah, it was just something I didn't expect to take off as quickly as it did. So yeah, it's been really exciting. <laughs> oh, you've gone. I can't hear you. Your mic's gone. <laughs> I can't hear you, sorry. <laughs> it says you're muted. Uh, what did I do? Oh, there you go, it's worked. Did out. I? And we're back. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's not Heroes Without Limits and more importantly, Hero Sheets, if we don't have a small technical difficulty. Uh, <laughs> I completely lost my uh, train of thought. Uh, but yeah, you just, you kind of just stumbled into this com community by just like being loud about it. And I super appreciate it because that's how I found out about this wonderful world that we've created together. <laughs> um, I promised that I had more that I wanted to add on, but I'm uh, <laughs> just, right, don't worry. yeah, it happens every week where I start a, a question that I'm like, this will lead to a place and then I completely lose it. Yeah, just it all the time. <laughs> just going to hop to the next question yeah. that was sent to uh, Spy Nova, who is just so wonderful for running tech tonight. Mm -hmm. um, and their question, uh, or her question is, uh, what is the big thing that you could, that you wish would be the standard in tabletop RPG industry slash community, but isn't? Um, within the industry, mm -hmm. uh, that they hire sensitivity readers for disability. Um, yeah. To make sure that they're putting things in um because with my combat wheelchair that i've made and um, which you can find on my pinned tweet on twitter mm -hmm. um uh i was talking about how i'm never gonna like i'm gonna pay and commission people um disabled people to make some art for it and make it look all nice and everything um and also have a plain text version for people but i'm never gonna charge people for it because why should i charge for something that should just be a standard in mm -hmm. a D, &D book why, why aren't there wheelchairs 
there should be. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's that's kind of the things I want. I feel like it's about change. It's like super overlooked that we have this like in Dungeons and Dragons, we have these like really cool worlds that we can go explore, but apparently no one needs a wheelchair or no one has prosthetics or any sort Mm -hmm. of mental disability or illness. Like all of these things just don't exist because it's fantasy, I guess, and those aren't fantasies that people have. I don't I don't know, it's yeah. No, no, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I get that completely. Like, um, and I've always been faced with the question of, like, people saying, well, don't you play D&D for escapism? And it's like, yeah, I do. But, like, at the same time, if that doesn't mean, escapism doesn't mean at the cost of erasing uh, a group of people. Yeah. You know, they should still be there. Um, and, yeah, it's just... It's, it's the same sort of thing as like it's, it's an equivalent to the question of like when people say well if you could get rid of your disability wouldn't you do it no I wouldn't because I can't imagine my life without my disability because it's as much a part of me as I am of it like we work together that's mm-hmm. yeah um you know and it's um yeah like I want to basically I want to be able to be a hero without having to give up part of myself in order to do it exactly I love it and like Nova in the chat makes a really great point of like people want to be able to escape with your disability not from it necessarily in all cases so like maybe your fantasy or your escapism is that like I exist in this world and like I exist as I do in this world like this current world without any of the like ableism that I currently face like that could also be the fantasy we're looking for you know yeah definitely yeah lovely uh now I'm just gonna hop over to my favorite question to ask on this show uh because this is my show and I get to ask the same question every month what's your favorite race um character or not race character uh, race class combination um race class combination Mm -hmm. um I'm a big fan of, um, oh, I've got to think, um, <laughs> there's a couple. I really like um, a wood elf or just an elf in general mm-hmm. with a uh, bard, <laughs> specifically um, either a whispers bard or um, a valor bard. Um, and I'm a big fan of variant human and ranger. Um specifically Monster Slayer Ranger, because my favorite character is one of those who I love to play. Um, And uh, I'm also a fan of, trying to think of the race name, um, Drow, sorry, Drow, um, either mixed with uh, like Druid or with Bloodhunter, even though Bloodhunter is not an official class. It's it's a fun one though. It's a fun um, one. I think I want to say every time I've asked this question, no one has yet to say bard, but I could be wrong and not remember the first three episodes of this show. <laughs> uh, so I'm specifically excited about the the uh, bard of valor because mm. every week I or every month I say this. I haven't played that class yet, but I've built a character for it and. Two weeks ago, I built a, a bard of valor, uh, and her name is Banjo, and she's just an old half orc. And I'm so excited for the opportunity to play her. So, like, what aspects of uh, the bard class, specifically the valor and the whisper, do you just enjoy so much? Um, with valor bard, it's that mix of casting and fighting, which is really good, um, and being able to buff the party as well as doing a lot of damage. Um, which typically if you're playing, you know, like a lore bard or a glamour bard, that's not something you get to do very often. Mm-hmm. Um, Whispers bard, uh, I just like it because it's really edgy. <laughs> goth, is, <laughs> goth is all hell. Um, and it was the, the first time I played that class was with a half vampire called Siegfried von Holtz, <laughs> who was uh, the bastard son of Strahd when we were in Barovia. That was a really fun campaign. Oh, that sounds um, so much fun. It was really good. Um, and 
um yeah that's that's kind of what I enjoy about Bard because I've always been a bit of a sucker for spell casting and fighting mixed together in a class which is also kind of like why I like Bloodhunter and it's also why I like um the Master Slayer Rangers as well mm-hmm. so but like mm, why not cleric because they can also be like good at fighting with also kind of that spell casting that you're oh, looking for yeah. um i have played a cleric once i played um a grave cleric um which was really fun but uh i don't know it's just i think it's i kind of pick the class based on the kind of character i have in mind mm-hmm. and usually my characters tend to fit into like bard or ranger or because there's something about um their backstory that like really suits it um so yeah I kind of pick my characters that way I love it I love just hearing everyone's different answers for all of these questions because it's always something new every week like Sophia has got me looking into paladins because she's just so about them and I want to know why Mm -hmm. um so let's hop over. <laughs> I can see her in chat now. Uh, I'm going to hop over to our next question uh, from Leather Jacket Bear, who I believe is also in chat, yeah. unless I am. Yeah. Okay. And their question was, what was your proudest RPG moment? Ooh. Um, okay. Proudest moment, like in game, I think. Yeah. yeah. I think in game. Like, whether it was a choice as a DM or, like, a character choice that you made. I think both would answer the question. Um, I think uh, for myself in-game, like, being a player, um, was when I played... Um, I played a Falabard who was a fawn um, called Selbuckthorn. Oh. Um, he was great. I love him. He's another very dear character of mine. Um and uh, he managed to, in Storm King's Thunder, talk down um, an entire um, room of uh, giants. Oh my gosh. Um, there were like eight of them, I think. And I basically had to roll charisma checks and I used the information that I gathered on things that they were afraid of to threaten them. Um, and uh, I rolled like really high every time because I had like expertise in it as well. I think I had like a plus 11. Oh my gosh. <laughs> to charisma at that point. Um, so that was really fun. Um, and there was also uh, Curse of Strahd um, in which I played Deswin for the first time. And it was a home game. So like we all played around a table. It was like in person with people, which is always nice. Um, mm-hmm. bit of a step and a change from uh, playing over Discord. And my best moment for that was um, <laughs> uh, we, we all decided while we're playing Barovia, so we'll drink wine um, at the table. Um, and I drank too much, which was, I guess was fitting because my character <laughs> was a drunkard anyway. Um, <laughs> and uh, Irina unfortunately died. Um, <sighs> and my, char- my character was like completely distraught because like him and Irina had like fallen in love. Um, and uh, I actually started crying in character, like in person <laughs> at the table, and like I was crying and like trying to like speak while crying and drunk, and that was a mess. And like the DM was like, "Like I feel really sorry for you, but I'm also like laughing because it's like <laughs> the most hardcore I've ever seen anybody go for a character." <laughs> That's so cute, though. I love it. It was a lot. Um, but yeah, that that was really fun. Like, oh, yeah, I those really are both that session. <laughs> those are both like sound like great moments. Uh, for the the Storm King's Thunder, were you actually like giving the th- like? Were you saying threats, or was it just like you rolled? Um, yeah, I was saying threats. Um, one of them, the I think it was the fire giants were afraid of um, uh, their gods punishing them. And I basically was like, well, if you attack us and you don't help us, like your gods will like cast you to damnation forever, basically, um, and just threaten them. Um, and yeah, they they like, I just went around intimidating them or, or charming them with things that I knew would like win them over because there was a frost giant 
um, who liked collecting magical items, so I offered up one of my um, magical items to them. Mm. Um, yeah, so that was good. I love little moments like that um, because I play a lot of D&D with like uh, people who are new to it and so persuasion or intimidation checks are such a great little way to force them to like get into it a little Mm -hmm. like you rolled a three what does that look like how does that sound yeah so to hear that you got like plus 11 to your rolls obviously those are some good threats (laughs) yeah that the dice that I got for it um was uh the same dice that I gave to Anna Prasa um I sent to her the very lucky dice um and it ended up being the one that she rolled um in order to stab the Xanathar through the eye so like yeah that's so cool (laughs) it it still kept its luck so I was like good (laughs) oh I love that I love that so much (laughs) um (laughs) let's look at another question let's see Oh, a question from Sophia. What's your favorite way of scaring your players consensually? Um, from having run a lot of horror campaigns. So a lot of Curse of Strahd's. Mm-hmm. Uh, I basically love playing on the, um, the five senses. So like what you hear, what you smell, taste, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and uh, I love doing that and also um, pathetic fallacy is really good where you personify the weather to match the mood um, so you know you describe rain as being like um, you know tears or, or like crying um, that sort of thing and like adding that really brings like an ambience to it and makes it very tangible um, my players really um, have enjoyed that and it also as well like if you have got characters that are um, disabled so say uh, they're hard of hearing or they are blind you describing the senses beyond just what you can you know, physically see in front of you they're still able to know what the world is like and experience the world in a way that's, that's you know yeah yeah real I I love it I um, as all of most of my friends know do not like horror one bit I don't like being scared but I do love how you dm and I do like when because I I've listened to you dm before and like um you you do go there where like it's scary but it's it's fun in a way like it's it's not like a horror movie where I feel like I'm trapped somewhere yeah um yeah it's um I kind of uh my players um you know, as like Nova would tell you, um, I'm very, uh, like the week before, if I've got something in mind that I know will be stressful, et cetera, do them. I like bring it up and say, Hey, I've got this idea. What do you think? Yes or no. Um, and if they say no, then I write something else and we go a different way with the story. Um, if they say yes, like then they've got that week, um, uh, like because we have like a week thing where they're like oh give me a week and I can get in the mindset for it for the session um, and uh, yeah so it's like it's it's all about knowing your players limits um, and like being very open in communication with them about it um, because like you you can still completely terrify them even if they know that something is going to happen that session I always do it in an ambiguous way where I'm like okay I've got this idea and this is the general theme of it. Um, and they're like, oh, okay, then that sounds okay. And like, I've got a week to prepare for it. And like, you can still sort of throw them a bit for a loop when they mm-hmm. first come around to it. Um, yeah, so like, it's, it's just, yeah, it's just important to have like an open communication with your players. Mm-hmm. I especially love um, that if they are okay with it, it's sitting on it for that period of time you can build things up a lot worse than they actually are like it's been a couple of months I'm still really scared for Voitra I think about it every now and then yeah oh she's not good at talking to people but we are gonna deal with the Raven Queen when we come back yeah yeah definitely um (laughs) yeah uh hopefully hopefully late Easter or the beginning of summer yeah we'll, we'll pick that campaign back up because i have stuff planned for voyager <laughs> <laughs> it makes me so nervous but i'm so excited i'm just i'm 
the true fear is that she's going to offend the Raven Queen because she's not good at talking to anyone. She's mm. very blunt. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll we'll see when we get there. Or uh, let's look at another question. Mm. Uh, so this is from Kina's or mm, I'm gonna say that it's Kina's, but it's K I. N A S in the Discord server, and he asks, "What is the best alternative uh, wood type as uh, compared to normal D and D uh, settings?" So, I I think that he is asking for like other settings, or if he's asking for another game. I'm... Um. Uh, let me think. Um, so if it's in terms of other settings, um, I do recommend like sometimes going back to old editions of D&D. And um, if you go on the subreddit for D&D, a lot of people have converted them into like usable fifth edition things mm-hmm. that are balanced. Um, uh, I typically do that if I'm you know looking at second edition Ravenloft um, and like incorporating that into fifth edition. Um, just because um, fifth edition Curse of Strahd is, it's not exactly bare bones, but like it's it's not as in depth because it's just the, the setting contained to one book rather than loads of different books. Mm-hmm. Build the setting up, um, and uh, yeah, I definitely recommend that. Going back through Planescape is really good. Um, yeah, and as uh, Leather Jacket Bear just said in the chat that um, Spelljammer has a a fifth edition conversion now um and yeah like uh just just you can find a lot of them even on i think like yeah it's definitely on the subreddit you can find extra yeah. settings and stuff that they haven't visited back in a while um and as for other games um i currently uh um, working on um, the Witcher TTRPG from Artel Solrian, um, which is an excellent TTRPG. Um, it really lends itself to like a lot of role playing, but also a lot of combat. It's a good mix for everyone, depending mm-hmm. on what you want to run. Um, and I've also got what else have I got? Uh, oh, the new Call of Cthulhu Seventh Edition. Ooh. I've just got that, um, and I plan on running that sometime. Um, after summer maybe i might do like a halloween thing um do a spooky game maybe Um, sounds like fun oh but you mentioned the witcher Mm -hmm. (laughs) aren't you doing a new show on our channel next month on the 22nd that is that exactly as i look up for my ad read that i don't have do you want (laughs) to do you want to give us like a a glimpse at what maybe will go on um, you can say I can no. tell <laughs> setting. <clears throat> um, so it's uh, twelve sixty nine. Um, it is set four years after Andrzej Sapkowski's um, "Lady of the Lake" book, mm-hmm. um, and it's one year before the Witcher One video game um, by CDPR. Um, and Geralt of Rivia is dead. Um, so is Yennefer of Vengerberg. Um, Siri has vanished. Um, and uh, <laughs> Destiny has sort of turned its gaze upon um, three other people. Uh, a witcher, uh, a doctor, and a mage. And they're all going to uh, come together in episode one. Um, and it's definitely... Um, run kind of like a TV show These this um, show will run like where it's a, a an episode sort of like um, built in the style of a TV show once a week um, so if you enjoyed the Netflix Witcher you'll definitely enjoy the um, the layout of the, this game um, and how it's going to run I'm so excited for it yeah I'm so excited as well I love the Witcher so much <laughs> If someone is not familiar with the Witcher series at all, can they still get into this and like be okay knowledge wise of like yeah, what's absolutely. going on? Absolutely. Um, with, with if, if you've got 
no knowledge of it, um, if you've got all the knowledge of it, um, yeah, you can definitely just jump in. Um, because uh, the whole like premise of, of me saying, you know, Geralt's uh, dead and so is Yennefer at this point um, is uh, it's very like it only touches on it every now and then. Um, mm -hmm. So basically you'll be learning as the players learn is how I've laid it out. So even if you don't know anything about The Witcher, um, you know, you can still follow along and enjoy it and be able to see what The Witcher universe is about. Mm -hmm. Can I give you a confession, Sarah? Sure. <laughs> I don't know anything. I don't know anything about The Witcher. That's absolutely uh, which, fine. <laughs> uh, just because I was going to watch the Netflix show, but it just looks too scary. But I'm very excited for your stream about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the, the universe can get a bit spooky at times and a bit heavy as well. Um, and the game that I'm running uh, will um, capture that as well. But um, yeah, I'm kind of still letting there be like in the show, you know, there's still humor and there's still fun stuff that happens. Um, so yeah, like, uh, like I said, you know, yeah. if you enjoyed the show or you aren't sure whether you're going to enjoy the Witcher universe or not, like definitely check it out because uh, you'll basically be hearing it run by somebody who's like, been obsessed with the witcher for a good few years now <laughs> as nova said in chat you are an absolute corner cop copia of witch witcher lore yeah um which is i'm gonna take this opportunity to derail from dungeons and dragons and just ask you some witcher lore questions <laughs> like what is a witcher <laughs> um a witcher is a genetically enhanced um human uh being um who has uh, these things called mutagens put in them. Their mm -hmm. mutations are taken from monsters um, and it's done do through this really painful process called the Trial of the Grasses. Um, and only uh, three in 10 boys ever survive the process. Um, in the core Witcher world, um, which is books and game um, mm -hmm. universe tied together, um, only boys become witches. Um, like there are no female witches however in my setting there are female witches um and uh so i'm just playing around with that a little bit mm -hmm. um but uh, and a witcher basically their entire job is to um hunt monsters um and you know kill them basically um in order to uh try and control the numbers of them um and unfortunately um, as human beings are pretty good at, they got afraid of what they created, uh, thinking mm -hmm. that they, they basically made more monsters, so they started trying to kill the witches <laughs> off, which didn't work out very well. Um, but that's also why there's only like Geralt and a couple of others left, is because so many of them were just killed. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, yeah, that's like the the short version of what a witch. <laughs> Um, yeah, You'll send me the long version. Yeah, they're able to cast basic magic, um, which are called signs. Um, there are Burden, Ard, Axi, Igni, um, and I'm missing one. Oh, Quen. That's the level <laughs> five. Um, signs all together. Um, and like that's all the magic that they have. Um, and they have that. Uh, well, in the show, he hasn't got them, but in the books and the games, they have cat eyes so they can see better in the dark um, mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, they're, they're basically like just monster hunters. <laughs> um, they're supposed to remain neutral and they're supposed to have no feelings, but the, the truth is, is like a lot of the time it's very difficult to remain neutral, um, especially because Geralt has really a really strong sense of what's right and wrong. Mm -hmm. um and uh he he does have emotions as well and it's it's kind of implied that all witches to an extent have emotions um but because they're told you know you you can't have emotions like you're supposed to be an emotionless monster um they just try and kind of pretend that that's what they're really like um mm -hmm. in order to get people to leave them alone mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> 
Thank you. <laughs> Thank yes, you for that clarification. <laughs> um, this will be like my last on stream Witcher question. Mm -hmm. uh, why does everyone love the Bard so much? <laughs> oh, um, Yaskia, or mm -hmm. if you've read the English books and played the English version of the games, he's called Dandelion. Um, oh, that's so cute. <laughs> uh, yeah, because um, Yaskia is a type of flower, and then um, in the English books, he's called Dandelion. Um, it's his it's his stage name. His real name is Julian, I believe. Yeah, Julian Alfred Pankratz. Um, and uh, yeah, he's he's basically like um, the flirty bard, but in a in like a positive way where he just falls in love with everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and he's because he was in the books and the games, he was like this kind of womanizer. And I I liked him, but I didn't like him as much as other characters uh, just because of that. Thing, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way um but uh in the show they changed it up joey Beatty changed it up and he was like no i wanted to play him as just somebody who uh just falls in love with everyone he meets like he's just so happy to be alive and like to meet new people and he just falls in love very easily mm -hmm. um yeah so and he's kind of like um where Geralt's like a, a grumpy uh witcher who like won't say he's got any feelings uh you know, Yaskier is kind of like the polar opposite to him. So like, mm -hmm. it's the whole like opposites, like against each other and like they complement each other really well. Um, and I think in, in one of the books or something, um, Yaskier makes a, a comment about it. A girl it's like, oh, I, like, I don't have to say anything. And he's like, oh, it's fine. Like I've got enough words for the two of us, <laughs> um, which is really sweet. Um, yeah. And uh, for, for anyone who's very concerned about how the show ended, the road, like the friendship between Geralt and uh, Yaskia currently, don't worry. They they are best friends and they do become friends. Don't worry. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> I know people are concerned all over Twitter, but yeah, they do become besties. So everyone loves two bros being. Yeah. I want to say bros, but we know according to chat it's just two bros being gay and you gotta love that yeah just just two guys being dudes two dudes being gay yeah <laughs> we love it <laughs> we love to see it <laughs> uh to transition back to dungeons and dragons mm -hmm. uh, another question from nova which was uh which is uh who is your favorite character that you've played Ooh, um that would be deswin rennet my monster slayer ranger um, who's currently guesting on um, Twilight Grove? Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, um, he's everyone's my favorite. favorite hobo. <laughs> yeah, he really is. Um, I am currently um, in the process of writing, uh, you know, short stories based around him, um, and they'll be illustrated. I intend when I get a Patreon to make a zine, so that mm -hmm. people can pay to basically fund that um and get like a, a nice copy of um a printed zine with short stories and stuff in um yeah like I don't know I don't know what it is about Deswin I think it's just I put so much effort into role playing him mm -hmm. um and like when Curse of Strahd was over and I wasn't playing him anymore I was genuinely heartbroken oh. <laughs> him so much um which is why it's a delight to be able to play him um uh, as a guest in um Sophia's game um yeah he's he's my favorite he's got arthritic knees um he's a grump but inside he's really like a massive softy um and he'd never let anything bad happen to anyone um yeah I just I just love him a lot he's great <laughs> <laughs> I love him too uh is there any because this is kind of part of the show is there any like aspect of him at all that you thought was gonna be prevalent in any way that just hasn't come up or like just any any thing that you have about him that you just wanted to like share um hmm. Hmm. uh probably his actual backstory um because the only thing is is that everybody knows oh he hates vampires and like i guess all the people who followed me on twitter i would know about him assume it's mm -hmm. because Strad is who he met but um no it wasn't um it was a um it was a vampire before that called the baroness 
um, which he led like a failed uprising against. Um, and because it failed, uh, um, yeah, he he ended up getting a lot of people killed. Um, and he has to kind of carry that burden. Uh, but like it never gets brought up. Like he, he acts in a way that implies that something's wrong and something has happened in the past, but like he never outright ever states it. Um, which is a, a nice way to role play him, I think, because he kind of keeps everything close to his chest and on guard. But yeah. No, I love him so much. And I, to I answer <laughs> uh, the question in chat up to something, or rather, I do take chat. Uh, questions from chat uh, and then gift nova just asked uh aliyah oh but, but just kidding that's not a question um <laughs> i love him so much and i like that this backstory <laughs> was not i did think that it was because of strad because he ruins everything oh yeah he does yeah <laughs> but to hear that like no someone beat him to that is nice and i love him <laughs> yeah <laughs> I think that's how most of this conversation has gone. It's just me being like, I, because he's such a well put together character, and you really did do like you can tell all of your um, effort that was put into uh, creating him and just really fulfilling him as a character. I just I love him. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely been like, I guess like a passion project. I guess I would put him down as. Um, mm-hmm. And I know that if I ever get to play in a long-term campaign again, I'd probably play him again. Um, Especially if it's like a a spooky setting or just, you know, something where like it was mysterious. Like I definitely would play him again in a big campaign. Oh, he would fit right in. (laughs) Yeah. But the problem is, it's like I have eternal DM syndrome (laughs) where like I'm the only person who ever DMs now. Um, Yeah. But yeah, I definitely would play him again. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's nice because I found um, at home, oh, yeah, I don't know if I've got it here. I don't think I have. But, like, my first piece of art I ever drew of Deswin, um, like, nearly three years ago. Um, <laughs> and just to see, like, how he looks now um, and how much he's grown in design. And, like, uh, like, you can see all, like, my furiously, like, scribbled notes of, like, all of his backstory in my sketchbook. Um along with a bunch of other things, uh, which uh, I can't show, unfortunately, because <laughs> it's going to be part of my zine and I want it to be a surprise. Um, but, uh, yeah, he, yeah, it's just, yeah, it, it just yeah. Really, I was like, yeah, he's he's grown a lot and, like, yeah, he's, he's probably become one of my most fully fleshed out characters, I'd say, now. Mm. Yeah. I, I love it. That's what that's what this show is about. Talking about characters and disabilities and giving our characters disabilities. And just <laughs> I just love him. I had another question, but I completely lost it because Sorry. just how I am as a person. Um let's see. Does chat have any questions? Uh while I also scroll through my list of shortening questions. Um, I think we only have one question left before we just like talk for like six questions or six questions, six minutes or so, uh, which is another question from Nova. Uh, Thanks, Nova, for supporting our show and giving us a lot of questions. Uh, It's what can able-bodied slash neurotypical people do to make the community more accessible as a whole? Um... Hmm. Yeah, this is a, a tough one. Yeah. Um, the community, I would say, you know, if you're streaming games, put web caption around, you know, mm-hmm. something as small as that. Um, if you're DMing, um, you don't have to, obviously, please don't like be going, because anyone at the table got a disability and like kind of demand um, that sort of they tell you. Or we'll just say, hey, is there anything I can do for anyone to make? playing easier or more accessible and make it clear that you know you're not going to pressure them into saying what their disability is because I know I'm very open about mine on Twitter Mm -hmm. and on here um but some disabled people and neurodivergent people chronically ill folks 
just aren't like it's 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 a it's a not not a touchy subject because like it's a negative it's probably that they had negative interactions with other people over it in the past um so just say you know is there anything i can do to make my game more accessible or easier to play um make sure that if you're doing handouts um make sure they're in a font that's easy to read um i think courier is a good one open dyslexic is also another good one yep um and just make sure that's that if anybody needs a print like in a large font size or um in a better looking font for them um that you do that it's just the small things really um and i've talked about how at gaming conventions or conventions where they have um the tabletop gaming area is tables should be far enough apart that you can get a wheelchair through Mm -hmm. Um, and tables also should be slightly raised so that if somebody does come with a wheelchair they can put their chair and actually get under the table rather than Mm -hmm. to sit far back um yeah it's 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 the small things like that and also um because i've i've been at tables unfortunately where um people are like oh no we don't allow dice rollers here like ones that announce the number of the dice that you've rolled um from your phone or from a tablet um the thing is is like that person has asked for it because they need it um you know like maybe they they can't read the number on the dice properly or maybe you know hard of hearing and they need to be able to hear over everyone else at the table what it is that they've rolled um you know just things like that like just accept them uh and just say yeah okay you know it it takes nothing to accommodate and so what if you have to hear a number be read out from a tablet only every now and then you know it doesn't really matter um as long as it makes it easier for somebody else um you know uh then then do it like make sure everyone's having fun exactly could not have said it better myself i don't even think i could have put it that way but yeah just let people exist in the space the way they need and don't get up in arms when they request things that are helpful and kind of a necessity to them yeah um well i'm out of questions (laughs) (laughs) um so we can just chill uh for like two Um, minutes there is a question in chat sorry there is there is a question in chat uh oh there's something going on uh where is it Um, says i'm wondering how you would approach what some of us amputees call the sci-fi effect where accessibility aids are shown as being superhuman ah Yes, that question. I We kind of talked about this on the first Hero Sheets hmm. vaguely when I, I think it was with Sam, so I think it was the first Hero Sheets. We were talking about, uh, is it Cyberpunk 77? It's like, yeah. it, is that, yeah, we talked about that and why it's such a bad idea. Uh, but what's your hot take on it? Um, I think it has to be... Um, carefully dealt with um because uh the cyberpunk setting for example has a habit of yeah you get like a a benefit quote unquote like a superhuman Mm -hmm. quality from it but the cost of making you less human yeah okay i my thing about that is um is if the person got the um uh the prosthetic and it's just a prosthetic for you know simple everyday tasks Mm -hmm. um uh then i don't see how that would make you less human it should be for things where um you know you're basically getting prosthetics that are um more like uh if if they're intended weapons that are intended to hurt people Mm -hmm. like i could understand that because you know you're basically um building like and if you do it willingly so like you say like you know that you haven't lost an arm or a leg or anything you just Mm -hmm. had it replaced with technology that is designed to hurt people then okay I can understand you lose some humanity for that 
but just having a prosthetic leg or a prosthetic arm shouldn't make you any less human um it's kind of i feel like that they didn't think about that because yeah um clearly they didn't have a sensitivity reader um yeah and this is why sensitivity readers are very important um and yeah uh, from having you know worked on some TTRPG myself um it is important because people sometimes just think oh this is a really cool idea and don't actually think about yeah. it's not cool to the people who genuinely live a certain way um because uh yeah like you can see them getting excited but they're thinking about it only with um able-bodied people in mind they're not yeah. thinking about how it affects or how it looks to um, disabled people. Um, so uh, my pro- my thing is, is like, I don't hate it because I can, like I just said, I can understand like if you willingly got um, replacements when you didn't need them um, and uh, they were designed to genuinely hurt people, then I can understand losing humanity for that. But I, I can't understand it for just having a replacement arm or you know a prosthetic leg. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. Um yeah, that's that that's what really struck me funny with Shadowrun and like why I won't really play it. Um just because it makes me feel a bit ugh. Um but yeah, like uh I definitely see like mm. Yeah, it's, it's one of those, like, hard ones to talk about because, like I've said before, in certain positions in the disability community, it's like I can only vouch for well, what you know. I can talk about what I know. Um, and uh, amputees is, like, not something I feel completely 100% I can talk about. Obviously, I don't have that experience. Um, all I can say is, like, I know how it makes me feel, which is not great. Um and uh, it would have to be talked about with people who are amputees and they would have to be the sensitivity readers for that area specifically um, mm-hmm. on a game uh, because they would be able to give you know genuine insight based on genuine experiences, um, mm-hmm. which is another thing abled people need to realize is disabled isn't like a, a, a general coverall for one person it's just like I have this specific disability and I can talk on that but I can't talk on somebody's experiences um, about you know a blind person or a hard of hearing person mm-hmm. um, I can't talk about those experiences because I don't have them um, all I can really do which is what I tend to do when I'm sensitivity reading or advocating is I say hey you should talk to this person or you should reach out to this person that I know of ask if they're okay talking with you about it and then talk about it with them mm-hmm. um yeah it's yeah it's one of those ones where like it links back to what I said kind of at the beginning of the show where I was like yeah sensitivity readers definitely need to become a thing in the community a lot more um they need to be normalized uh, and it needs to be something that gets put on every project um yeah so yeah, yeah. Sorry. I rambled, but yeah. No, it's okay. I absolutely love it. Um, and it's a great and like well thought out answer. And again, I just couldn't say it better myself. But I do think that we are at time. Uh, so again, thank you all for joining us for Hero Sheets. Mustang, do you want to toss out all of your cool mentions and where we can find you and yeah, sure. all of that? Um, you can find me on Twitter at Mustangs Art. Um, you can also find me here on Twitch, um, which is uh, twitch.tv forward slash Mustangs Art. Um, and tomorrow, I think at five, is it five? Yeah, five, five till 6.30, I'm doing like a sort of chill stream kind of like this, um, just talking about DM tips. Um, so you can come and like ask questions and we'll look through some of the module books and stuff together um which will be fun i think um and yeah i have um silver and steel on the 20th mm-hmm. of february 
um, coming out, which is going to be really exciting. Um, we are sponsored by uh, our Talsorian Games, um, who are giving us some special giveaways, um, which we'll talk about closer to the time. Um, for people who you know are in chat for the game, um, can get their hands on some um, TTRPG goodies. Um, and I'm also in Tales of Thra, and I cannot remember for the life of me when that is, but I know it's next month. It's in February. Um, oh. And uh, I can't say much about my character yet, but I'm playing a Gelfling. Um, so I'm very excited. Um, and yeah, I yeah, can't wait. Just, just yeah. there's a lot of stuff coming up, and it's going to be exciting and fun. Yeah. And I should also have a podcast coming out this year. Um, which is my long-term D and D campaign that's been going on for nearly a year now. Um, I'm so excited. Format, yeah, it's gonna be fun. Super excited! February is just a good month. All sorts of cool things are going on in February. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, oh my gosh, I forgot how to close the show. Oh, you can find me on Twitter at ethnic underscore darito d a r i t o um where you can see me tweet about all sorts of not not real issues uh like misplacing my wallet for a week uh but we will see you guys next month on the 27th where we will have a our first returning guest uh diconomist prime aka vince will be coming back because december didn't go great for us Uh, And we will try to do that again. Safe travels, and I will see you guys then.